Um, so I've written a book that's tried to bring together the sciences, plural, from various fields that help explain the psychology of risk perception. The name is How Risky Is It Really? Why Our Fears Don't Match the Facts. There's evidence from neuroscience, from what's called behavioral economics, why we make stupid choices about money, from the psychology of risk perception specifically, why do some risks feel scarier than others, from the sociology of what's called cultural cognition. All four of those fields brought together explain that it is intrinsic to the human animal that our perception of risk will be subjective. We will never all see the same facts the same way because you have your life experiences and, and we all have our own, right? So risk is a subjective product of how the few facts we have feel. The result of which is, what I call in my book, the perception gap. What that means is sometimes we're more afraid than the facts say we need to be. And like with climate change, we're not as afraid as the facts say we ought to be. And this psychology explains why. And it explains why in such a powerful way to me that it argues for a new, more holistic view of what risk means. Risk is argued as the facts. What are the facts on climate change? And when we get to the facts, we'll know what to do. Well, the facts are going to look different to a right wing or a left wing or a you know, woman or a man or young or old or parents. We need to build in as a society to our planning for dealing with risk the fact that we intrinsically get risk wrong. And that can be a risk in and of itself. That's the perception gap. When we're too afraid of a risk, nuclear energy compared to coal. We end up with an energy policy that protects us from what we're afraid of, nuclear energy, and we end up with coal. Worse. No brainer. When we're not afraid enough of obesity or the sun, you go out in the sun for more than 15 minutes without sunscreen on, oops. But it's natural. We're less afraid of natural risks. When we're not afraid enough, bad, unhealthy choices. And when we're all afraid of a risk together as a society, because it has the same characteristics, like, for example, cancer. It kills us in a painful way. That's a characteristic that makes a risk scarier. It's worse to die being eaten alive by a shark than die in your sleep of heart disease. That's more likely. That's the one you should be afraid of if you're rational, but painful is bad. So if we recognize as a society that we get risk wrong because of this underlying psychology, and we look to that psychology that explains why we can use that to avoid the risk that comes from getting risk wrong. So for the liberal conservative split, what's really interesting is liberal and conservative are really just surface labels for something that's underneath going on that's much more profound. This is the theory of something called cultural cognition. Cultural cognition posits that we shape our views so that they agree with the people like us, so that we get along with our tribe. It's important for us as social animals to have tribal cohesion. Helping the tribe helps our survival. You know, when the lion attacks, you're lion food. <laughs> if we're all together, maybe you survive, right? So go Giants, go Red Sox, go America, go liberal, go conservative. Underneath cultural cognition posits that tribe is defined by how we want society to be organized. So some of us want society to be organized in a way that's called individualist. We would think about them as libertarians politically, but basically they want society to, most, society to mostly leave the individual alone. And on the other end of that continuum are people called communitarians. We're all in it together. So a communitarian looks at climate change and they think, wow, I'm all for climate change being a problem because the solution requires a community response, and that's the way I want society to work. So they see the facts of climate change through that underlying subconscious psychology. An individualist says, Kyoto, regulations, the Japanese and the French and the Germans telling me what to do? I disagree with climate change, which is not really what they're saying. They're saying if I agreed with climate change, society would operate in a way I don't like. So these liberal and conservative labels are labels for an underlying cultural cognition social worldview that makes us selectively pick the facts about a risk that allows our opinion
to conform with the people around us so that the tribe likes us and we get along with the tribe and that feels safer. So what I've learned in studying this stuff is that I'm as dumb as the next guy, <laughs> or shall I put it this way, dumb as a pejorative way. I'm as influenced by the emotional characteristics of the risk situation as the next guy. And I recognize that that's a danger. So for example, when I go driving, I put on a seatbelt. I know I'm about to engage in dangerous behavior. And I live in Boston, so it's particularly the case. OK, um, I know that because of certain psychological characteristics, my judgments about risk might not be the best thing for my health. I slap that on my mental floor, you know, that, that's like a cognitive seatbelt as I'm trying to make decisions. Does it cure it? Nope, because it's intrinsic. It's in the human animal. Does it slightly move me towards doing things that will lead to healthier choices? Yeah, a little bit. I, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging or anything, but for example, I know that we make instinctive judgments about risk. So one of the things that I'll do if I have to think something through is I'll come back to it tomorrow. I know that we have confirmation bias. We look up the information with which we already agree. I'll make myself watch Glenn Beck. <laughs> it hurts, but I'm going to tell myself that if I don't open my blinders up, it's in my best interest to open my blinders up, get multiple sources, take more time, recognize that the risks and benefits of a choice are swaying me to answer my cell phone when I'm driving, because it might be my wife calling or some cool job or something, and the benefit is outweighing the risk, but I could hit a tree. I know the psychology of risk perception tells me that risk and benefit is one of the characteristics that could lead me to make a dangerous choice. And I try to use that consciously as a seatbelt to protect myself as I make choices. I'm a little better at it, but not a hell of a lot.